If you work in banking, you've probably heard of ALM, which stands for Asset Liability Management. So what is ALM? Well, let's start with the basics. So a bank is a financial intermediary, and it collects money from depositors to whom it pays interest, and then it loans that money out to borrowers from whom it collects interest. Okay, so that's the basic historic model of a bank. And so the bank's profit is just going to be the interest that it earns from borrowers minus the interest it pays to depositors. So historically, what a bank would try and focus on is just obtaining funds at the lowest possible cost. Because if you can decrease this amount here, then that is going to increase the bank's profit. Okay, things are more complicated now. Okay, so in the past, a typical bank loans were responsible for nearly all of their revenue. Nowadays, banks also make money from investments, speculation from derivatives, and, and other sources. Okay? Also, historically, banks got almost all of their funds from deposits. And while deposits are still very important for a lot of commercial banks, deposits are like more than 80% of their funds. Banks nowadays also obtain funds from other sources, might be short and long-term borrowing, securitizations, for example, mortgage-backed securities, collateralized borrowings. There are a number of sources of funding for banks. Okay? Now, these changes to the banking industry have introduced new risks, and banks' failure to manage some of those risks, like, for example, re uh, related to securitizations, mortgage-backed securities, resulted in the financial crisis in 2008. Okay, so now banks really are focusing on some of the newer risks that have been introduced as well as historic risks uh, with asset liability management ALM. So ALM is about managing risks. Okay, Specifically, the bank is trying to match assets and liabilities. When you say, well, what do you mean by matching them? Fixed versus floating and, and long-term, short-term. We're going to talk about a lot of that and a, a number of gaps that exist and create issues for banks and how they try and optimize these gaps okay and ultimately what the goal is of the bank is to try and protect their profit and specifically measured by their net interest income okay and also the firm value so to make sure the bank's uh, economic value of its equity is not fluctuating too wildly and that the bank doesn't have some kind of liquidity crisis where as we saw in 2008 some banks actually went insolvent Okay. So these gaps, so the earning gap, duration gap, cash flow gap, liquidity gap, we're going to talk about all these gaps in the videos to come. And what the bank is trying to do is to use ALM to manage the risks associated with these gaps. Just to give you an idea, uh, with the earning gap, for example, uh, I talked about the bank's profit net interest income. So net interest income can fluctuate when there's a change in interest rates. And just to give you one example, if you had a comp, uh, you had a bank, and almost all their assets were fixed rate. So let's say they had a bunch of fixed rate thirty year mortgages, and they were four percent interest they were getting. And then their in terms of their funding, their fund uh, the liabilities for the bank they were floating rate liabilities, and they were paying let's say zero point five percent interest on the liability. So now you see the interest uh, margin here four minus zero point five percent. So we got a three point five percent interest margin but what if the what if the interest rates go up then the floating rate liabilities this will increase from 0.5 percent let's just say it goes to one percent but these the mortgages the bank's assets we said were mostly fixed rate 30-year mortgages so these are still getting interest at four percent so now the the margin went from three and a half percent to now it's four minus the new floating rate of one so now it's it's three percent. It went from three and a half percent to three. The margin got squeezed. Okay, and so when I talk about matching assets and liabilities, and we'll discuss this in, in a lot of detail, that's one issue you could have. So then you could have a change in interest rates. The bank didn't do anything. It's just interest rates changed, and now it has has shrunk the the profit margin. So this is the earning gap. Duration gap has to do with the sensitivity. Uh, the, the bank's sensitivity to basically changes in interest rates, in particular when we're talking about duration, we're talking about longer term. So, so basically long term and then also fixed rate instruments tend to be more sensitive to changes in interest rates. Okay, So that's we'll get into that with the duration gap. Cash flow gap, if you have a situation where, let's say the bank, so they've got a fixed rate uh, mortgage, okay, and they're expecting to get payments over 30 years, so 30 years, and then they have a liability. They funded these mortgages, right? They got to get funds from somewhere. And they funded this with, a, let's say, a one-year CD. Okay, someone d deposited funds for a one-year CD. And then after, so they take the money from the one-year CD. 
So basically short-term borrowing, and then they lend it out for a 30-year mortgage. Uh, and then after one year, the person cashes in the CD and says, hey, I want my money back. I want my money back. And the bank says, well, hey, wait wait a minute. We lent it out, a uh, 30-year mortgage. We don't have the cash. It's not that the bank did, made a bad loan. It's just the timing. There's a cash flow gap here of the timing of that. Now the depositor wants their money one year later, but the bank's not going to collect it for over a period of 30 years. Okay, so that cash flow gap trying to, to match the maturities okay, of the, these assets and liabilities so that we don't have some kind of insolvency problem or something. Now, liquidity, we could have, and, and we'll talk about this in great detail. When you talk about liquidity stress event, let's say the bank is relying on funds from like the repo market, which we'll talk about, or securitizations, mortgage-backed securities. Uh, so let's say they're getting a lot of funds from MBS, mortgage-backed securities, and all of a sudden something happens, the market crashes, and nobody wants to buy mortgage-backed securities. So then the bank, oh, okay, well, we can't get funds from this source anymore. Well, what if that happens, if this extreme event happens, this liquidity stress event, is the bank going to become insolvent? And has the bank, now, if you realize, yeah, well, okay, if this happens, we can become insolvent. The bank can take steps to try and address this risk. So basically, the banks now are aware of these different risks, okay, these different gaps. And what ALM is all about is you got like the Treasury Department of the bank, trying to actively take steps to manage these risks so you don't have huge fluctuations in the bank's net interest income or the economic value of the bank's equity or worst case scenario, some kind of liquidity uh, event or problem where the bank becomes insolvent. We're going to talk about all this and more in the videos to come.